Welcome to Module 1 for EDU 131. As you will notice, the dates on this video may or may not be the correct dates for the time in which you are taking this course. So do not look at the dates, just listen to the instructions. In this module, we will be talking about introduction to the family. So you want to make sure you review all the resources that are given in this particular module. You're going to read chapters 1, 2, and 3 in your textbook, Home, School, and Community Relations. Please walk through the Module 1 lesson. You might want to look at Chapter 2 and 3 PowerPoint. And then you're going to work on this discussion form about the family. And then your first journal writing. And we're just going to click on some of these assignments. So journal writing number one, you're going to write an autobiography of your life. And while writing, some of the topics you will discuss are what family structure or organization were you born into? How do you feel this has affected your adult years? Which of your life roles, school, work, family, etc., do you consider to be the most important? And explain how this is reflected in the life choices that you make. So spend some time uh, reflecting back on your life and write your autobiography for this assignment. And then your professional behavior checklist. Um, one of our uh, values that we hold dear here in our education department is professionalism. And so we want you to fill out a professional behavior checklist. And you are going to look at it. You will click on this right here and that will download it for you or you can look at it right here either way um, and you are going to fill this out and this is the professional behavior checklist and you will go through each particular characteristic and decide which one of these statements best describes you now as an education major you are going to fill this out at least three times during your um, degree program in EDU 173, EDU 131, and then your final course 284, 285. You will also fill it out in your introductory practicum EDU 184, and you may also, if you are taking any of the administration courses, you will fill it out there as well. So this is just a great reflection on, okay, how am I displaying these professional behaviors? And so it may be in the work setting, it may be in the school setting. Um, so you decide at this point in time which one of these statements best describes you. And then under EDU 131, you will place an X where you think that describes you the best under each one of these areas. Now there are several areas, and if any of you are like me, there are several of these areas I need to work on. So, you know, you're not going to grade yourself the highest, the best on each one of these, and this is a progression as far as um, the strengths of this particular um, characteristic. So reaction under stress, for instance, maybe you would say, sometimes I lack self-control needed to perform duties under stress, and you would make your X there. Obviously, not all of us can be consistently demonstrate poise and control under pressure and you handle stressful situations well. That would be ideal, but most of us are not able to do that. So you just be honest and fill this out accordingly for each one of these characteristics. And then, and you do not need to get signatures at this point in time, but then here you're going to look back and decide on one or two of those areas that you feel like are a little bit of a problem area for you. You are going to list those problem areas here and then you're going to come up with a goal of how you want to improve on that problem area. So what would your be your goal as far as reacting under stress, let's say for example. So if I clicked up here, if I had marked here, then perhaps my goal would be to consistently demonstrate poise under under pressure or maybe my goal is just this one occasionally excitable but capable of performing required duties adequately under pressure so you know those could be your goals which one of those might be your goal and then you would write in your goal right here and then you're going to say okay what's my plan of action how am I going to reach that goal so then you're going to have some steps that you want to take in order to reach that goal Perhaps one of the steps you need to take is when I begin to feel anxious, I stop, I take some deep breaths, and I calm myself before reacting under that stress. 
whatever the steps might be that you need to take in order to help you to reach your goal for that particular problem area. Maybe your problem area is um, not being able to get somewhere on time, your timeliness. And so your goal is, well, I'm going to make sure I am on time for every single class that I attend or for every time I go to work this semester. Um, and so then your plan of action would be, maybe I need to set an alarm that's 30 minutes ahead of time. Or maybe I need to set an alarm for every 15 minutes to remind me to get up and get moving. Or whatever it is you need to do for your steps that you need to take for your plan of action. The time frame for completing it should be by the end of the semester. So think, make it realistic, make it doable. Um, so you write your problem areas, your goals, the plan of action, and your time frame. Again, you do not need to get any signatures, then you will upload this to this assignment area. So again, you're going to submit the completed form here. You're going to list one or two goals on the last page of the form, develop a plan, and later on in the semester, we're going to check in with you to see how you're doing. You also want to think about how can I incorporate these particular goals into my service learning as well. So you'll be having to write about how you've taken your professional goals and incorporated it into your service learning as well. Okay, so then after that assignment, you are going to be doing the volunteer service location. And for this assignment, it says, for this course, you will need to complete specific assignments while volunteering in a classroom, approximately for a total of five hours or a little more, either in a childcare setting or an elementary setting, specifically working with families or parents. If you're currently working in a childcare or school setting, you can do your volunteer time with your employer. However, it should not be your regular work hours. It should be volunteer time. So your volunteer service hours should be a project where you are doing service in a child care or school location to benefit children and families. You should spend specific time working with families or parents. So the first thing you're going to do for this assignment is you're going to discuss where you will be doing your volunteer service hours and then how will your volunteer service learning benefit children and specifically families or parents in your community. And for instance, are you going to be helping out with families at a fundraiser? Or are you going to actually be helping out with families or parents in a parent education seminar? Um, what is it specifically you will be doing that's going to be helping families or parents? And then thirdly, you're going to provide the name and contact information of the supervisor at the volunteer service learning um, location. So this is an online text assignment where you're just going to type directly into the text editor. So then click the add admission button, add submission button to begin and then you can copy and paste those three things and put it into that submission area and answer those questions. So that's really all you need to do at this time and I hope you're going to enjoy your time volunteering with families and parents. Um, so that is all, these particular um, items are all due at one particular time in the semester and then a week or so later you will have another group of assignments that are due. The first one there is the big major assignment resource gathering. So during these times you're going to be working on this, you're not going to wait till the last minute. Again, this is important to get started on. There are several things in this resource gathering that you will do. You're going to listen to a podcast on the Parents Journal. Um, and you will pick a topic that's beneficial to you and to families you work with, summarize the interview that you listened to, and give your opinion in the segment explain why you chose that particular topic. You're going to do an annotated bibliography of five helpful books on parenting issues that relate to the content of this course could be included in a resource room for parents at a child care center or at a school. These could be books you have read and have found helpful, or books a trusted friend or relative has read, and the bibliography must be in APA format and include a brief synopsis of the book, the relevance of the content for families with young children, and indicate if this is a book that you have read or a reliable friend or relative has read. So here's an example of an annotated bibliography. It's one that I have read uh, a couple of different times, in fact, and it really helped me with my uh, children as they were growing up. And then the next thing you're going to do is conduct a search of journal articles related to family structure today and or experiences of parenting 
or a parenting a child with disabilities and or English as a second language. Read and summarize two of the articles that you found. At least one of the articles should include a focus on children with disabilities and their families and or children and families who are culturally and or linguistically diverse. Include the following points in your summary. The main points of the article, citing the author and writing in APA format. The final paragraph should be, should be your response to the article or the author. Did you agree or disagree with the author and why? What did you find most useful and how will you use this information in your work with children and families? And then make sure you have a reference page in APA format. Again, you're going to do um, list one of the articles um, that is a, a focus on children with disabilities or children and families who are culturally or linguistically diverse. Um, but you're going to read and summarize two articles here for this particular section. D is from the following list. Choose three local community resources to investigate and provide relevant information about each of the three agencies chosen. These community resources should be related to your field of study, either education or interpreter ed um, or whichever program you're in. Gather as much information as possible about these services and write it up in your report. Include the following five items for each of the three agencies you research, and there are the five items. So there's a long list here, so you can choose from any of these. Um, and then for E, you're going to find five helpful web websites on working with parents and families or websites that deal with diversity issues. Give the URL address, list helpful resources found on each site, and tell why you found each website interesting. Compile all the above information into a report and submit it into Moodle in this assignment area. Please label each section with the corresponding letter A, B, C, and so forth. For instance, this first one would be A, so your summary of your uh, what you listened to would go there. B, right there. C, and so label your portion of your uh, paper accordingly. So this just gives you some specifics and then upload it in here. This is a um, rubric here to give you understanding how we're going to grade that. So that's the resource gathering. And then another major project is the family engagement plan. And this is just a small portion of the family engagement plan. It's the introduction letter. And what you're going to do is in getting ready for the school year, you have decided to send a letter to the family of each student in your preschool class. The point of the letter is to introduce yourself describe the curriculum, highlight a few upcoming projects, and provide information about what to expect the first day. And as you write, think about the need to create a warm tone, to be clear and organized, to avoid any educational jargon because parents really don't understand it when you're talking that way, and to stimulate interest and excitement about school. Be sure your letter is sensitive to all cultures, family compositions, time and financial constraints, and inclusive while communicating your knowledge and displaying self-confidence. Now utilize this information that you have um, learned in this course so far, what you've read about, and submit one letter in English and translate it into Spanish or another language of your choice that would be relevant to your situation. Many of my students have used Google Translate to do that, but as you know, Google Translate doesn't always translate correctly. So if you know somebody who speaks Spanish, please have them edit it for you before you submit it to help to make sure that the um, language is correct and the translation is correct. So that is that next assignment, the introductory letter of the Family Engagement Plan. And then you'll have three quizzes, one for each of the chapters that you read for this module. I hope you have a great module. Thank you for joining us and please again contact me if you have any questions.